get Chris going here. All right. Well, welcome back to yet another edition of what we call The Rant here at Light Beer Dark Money. I'm Chris Clements. I'm Sean Noble. And welcome back. And uh, there's so many different things going on in our fair republic that I, I you know, we, we for those of us that are listening, we, on these rants, we, we take turns picking sort of the topics. And, and there seems to be one overriding topic after our last rant on um, SCOTUS Watch that overshadowed exactly what we were trying to talk about on that day. You know, you have some very monumental casework and decisions that came down from the Supreme Court. And unfortunately, it didn't get a lot of got a lot of airplay. What what got a tremendous amount of airplay on that day was the fact that Britney Spears, you know, testified in a court in Los Angeles to be freed from this uh, custodial order that her father's had on her for the better part of 13 years. And it just ignited the entire populace. Even even a stalwart conservative like Senator Ted Cruz from the great state of Texas did an entire segment on his podcast on Free Britney. Free Britney. I'm all in on Free Britney. Um, now, why, now, why are you all in on Free Britney? Well, because I, I'm not there yet. I'm a fan of Britney Spears. Um, I, I've enjoyed her music since she started. Oh my um, gosh, we're going to disagree. Her, her music um, <laughs> is is a core part of. Um, there, there's a lot of Britney in bar bar method uh, playlists. Okay, so we hear a lot of Britney. So I, and, I, and and why is bar method important? Well, bar method is important to me because that's a that's the exercise uh, regime that that I did for or have done for a number of years. Actually, loved it enough to become an instructor. So I'm a bar method instructor. Um, and Brittany is, you know, I'm just a big fan. She also, this is, this is crazy because I have no idea how this happened. This happened a number of years ago. She follows me on Twitter. Really? Yeah. So you guys are Twitter buddies. We're Twitter buddies. Yeah. Well, not that we ever interacted, but, um, but it's, so it why do you think that? I don't. Is it has to do with your casework and your, some of the stuff you did with the <laughs> Coke brothers in California? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I I'm, I don't remember when. She Maybe Brittany is following this podcast. Yeah, I, yeah, don't, you don't, think so. I don't think so. so. But um, let me look it up here because, and my wife is shaking her head as she's listening to this. I'm sure because uh, it is a it is like it's the one thing I've got that's kind of an interesting factoid. Okay, that, you know. Well, great. Then this is this is topical. Yeah. Um, I was I was struggling what could be topical today. Oh, she's definitely topical. So she. She has 55.5 million followers, and she follows 367,000 people. That's incredible. So, that's a, so to be one of those, that's, that's not a bad ratio. <laughs> You're fucking 367,000. <laughs> Her 367.5 favorite friends. Yeah. So you're all in on Free Britney. I am. I, I just, I, look, if she can tour and do a residency in Las Vegas and... You know, man, it, it's, it seems crazy to me that there is a conservatorship on someone, on an adult who is successful and has done, a, you know, great work, um, but depending on your taste, of course. Um, but, you know, I went and saw her, her show in, in Vegas on New Year's Eve a few years ago. It was, um, it was awesome. I loved it. So much fun. Did she limp, lip sync through the entire thing? No, she sang. Did she sing? Yeah. There were, that's been kind of the uh, the knock on her, is that her show isn't, uh, the choreography is great, you know, all the dancing, all the all the different things she does is is fantastic when she's on. And and that's been another big issue, I think, under the conservatorship is that she's had, a, a, you know, a demonstrable drug and alcohol problem. Uh, her mental stability has been called into question. And so my my pushback, my only question really in this whole thing is, um, what do we not know? 
Well, and and, 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 and no one's talking community. about that. No, yeah. everyone's like free Britney, free Britney, free Britney. That's great. I saw. Okay, a, but I saw, what don't we know? We I, that's a good question. Um, and we don't know everything, obviously. What uh, is the I judge did see, scene? I that? did see a tweet <laughs> that said, "You got to be kidding me! If the Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> can take care of himself, how in the world can Britney Spears not?" <laughs> Well, that is true, but Ozzy is, you know, he's kind of on the down. Yeah. I think he has Parkinson's. Is that right? Oh, I don't know. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know. Something that. like that. Or I don't know. But that is, a, but, 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 but also Ozzy has Sharon, <laughs> has had Sharon for the better part of 40 years. So that's a, and she has put up with a tremendous amount. Well, and it, I mean, I don't know if you listened to or read her testimony. Um, I read, I saw excerpts, I saw bit, bits and pieces of it. I still go back to the same question: Is like, what don't we know? And I'm not, I'm not defending her dad. I'm not defending, you know, any of it. But for for a judge for this long to say no, um, that this is this conservatorship is going to stand in force. Um, there's something we don't know, and it, it most likely, I would, I would assume, um, has to do with her her mental capacity. It's possible. Um, but it's t- it was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, to, to listen to the to, to her her testimony before the judge, the fact that she can't go in the car with her boyfriend, um, the fact that they they won't let her take her ID out. Yeah, I mean that's that's like there's there's got to be some ramifications that that um, I mean I I I think it's important for us to have the exercise of her going through this because there probably needs to be some changes to whatever the legal structure is that allows this to happen. Yeah. Um, because that it is I rare agree. for a young adult who is very successful to be placed under conservator- conservatorship when it's really meant for you know old people who are incapacitated generally mentally yeah so, I I don't know I just I, I find it I guess offensive is the word I'll use I find it offensive that she is trapped in this situation and, and yet if you look at her history so much of it she brought upon herself well and and you know but, with, but has she done anything that's radically more damaging than Dozens and dozens of other celebrities. I mean, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I think you. I, I mean, think attacking that's a, great a car question. with an umbrella, you know, big deal. <laughs> Isn't Lindsay Lohan still under conservatorship, or is she free? Was she under conservatorship? Yeah, her dad. Her dad had her kind of under huh. something as well. She blew through all her money, and had uh, talk about a severe alcohol and drug problem. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think there are a number of, of celebrities in that era, you know, younger celebrities who had, I mean, we can point to who had really dramatic issues with both wealth, you know, fame, uh, the world coming, I mean, there's a spiritual issue, the world coming at them in a way that really messed them up. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, that era, the Lindsay Lohan, Britney Spears sort of celebrity there's, there's some some that that grew out of that and they've they've done really well um I mean you could have seen you know a, a guy like Justin Timberlake being you know caught up in that whole I guess it's that whole Disney yeah you yeah, know Mickey uh, Mouse Club. Disney Ma- Mickey Mouse Club on yeah and uh, and a lot of those kids came out not so good and and some were able to turn it around and really make something of themselves I mean Justin being one of them and uh, he was one of the first ones to tweet out his support, which mm-hmm. was great. I mean, uh, because as most followers probably know, they were together for a long time. Well, and 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 some of us believe that Justin was in part a reason that she had a bit of a breakdown. Really? Yes. Really? I, I, I don't follow it that closely, <laughs> I guess. Well, so that was her true love, the true love of her life. He broke her heart, and she went off the deep end. I think I guess, that's... I guess there's a case to be made for that. Yeah. You know, probably for a lot of those. I mean, look what happened to um, Miley Cyrus. Right. 
you know, some, and she's tremendously talented. And she kind of went off. Well, you talk about someone a different direction, but now it voice. seems to be coming back. Yeah, but I think it's all that same that same era. Well, it's it's there's just you know. and that control, I guess. You know, Disney. When you sign up for Disney at a young age, you're basically signing. You, you and your parents are signing over your life. Yeah, and especially if you're extremely talented. And getting out of that control, making a name for yourself, trying to trying to bridge yourself out of, I mean, for for Britney Spears, for Justin Timberlake, and, and then for a Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, uh, it's it's been rocky. Yeah, and for, it's I, I think for that there's all, and there's more. Well, and if you look at, um, there's just been a number of artists who get essentially trapped in these contracts that they sign at a very young age. I mean, you look at what happened with Taylor Swift. I mean, she yeah. had a number of albums that she had no control over. So she's <laughs> gone back and re-recorded. <laughs> yeah. Pretty smart. Um, yeah, free Britney. Yeah, okay, I'm convinced. Really? Yeah, okay. Uh, that was a good argument. How about that? Yeah, we'll see. I don't even <laughs> think I made a very good argument. Other than well, I, I just we'll feel s- bad about it. <laughs> well, it, like, going back to the initial point, it, there's so much we don't know, and that's unfortunate. Um, I think I think the tide. There's going to be a lot of pressure for the judge to do something. Um, and at at 38, you're, I mean, the other arguments are correct. You know what? What is it? What we? What don't we know? Yeah. But other other celebrities in that vein have had. Um, I mean, look at Robert Downey Jr. I mean, he comes to mind not so much as somebody who was under conservatorship, but was in and out of prison and jail and rehab and rehab and really pivoted in his forties and made you know you know tremendous strides both spiritually, physically, emotionally, and one can only hope the same for her. Yeah, kind of like I pivoted in my forties. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about that. <laughs> well, talk about control. The next, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the National Education Association had a convention this last weekend in Washington D.C., and part of it was virtual. And they came out with a a very broad statement supporting the forced education of our children into critical race theory, and uh, which is amazing to me because they've been denying that's part of their platform, part of their agenda, and yet they went all in. And then um, word has it, as of yesterday, they, they scrubbed it from their website in terms oh, really? of their position. Yeah, their position paper on it. Well, and the uh, American Federation for Teachers, mm-hmm. is that the other big That's the other big one. They, Randy Weingarten, Weingarter, um, she had a statement um, or put something out to her membership that said that they are preparing the legal... Um, defense, and they have the resources in hand to defend teachers who teach critical race theory. Yeah, there's like 5,000 teachers nationwide. Did the Daily Wire, you can go on their website, has a full list of teachers who have said that they will forcefully teach critical race theory, hmm. which basically, for those who don't know, who are listening, and is is a Marxist ideology that came out of academia for years ago that, that teaches that everything in in this world can be seen through the filter of race. And that you're you're actually, if you're white, you're born a racist and your children are racist. They are oppressors of others. And and that therefore that needs to be corrected. And there's a huge groundswell of it's it's not a they're trying to paint it as a Republican issue or whatever else. There's a groundswell of Parents across the fruited plain standing up in in uh, school board meetings saying, "No, this is not going to be taught to my kid. This right. is not how I raise my kid." And and there's no way that that we're going to divide ourselves and 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 balkanize ourselves under this theory. It <clears throat> it's it strikes me how far. So one, I'll say, I feel like the nation has come a long ways. Yeah. In in the race issues. Um, clearly, we have a long way to go, but I, I really, it would, I would love to know what Martin Luther King would be thinking if he were here, based on what he gave his life for, which was equality 
and to be judged by the content of your character, not by the color of your skin. And this is this critical race theory concept just feels like a complete backlash of of that. That that's no, we're we're going to judge you based on the color of your skin. Period. Yeah. There there was a uh, congressman the other day. I can't remember his name, and um, maybe we can put the link on the website. But he had um, his his wife is white. He's he's African American. He's black, and he made a statement basically saying so through through the filter of critical race theory, my children are going to learn that my wife, <laughs> their mother, is is my oppressor, and that's how far this is going off the rails. Yeah, that's how yeah. far this. I thought it was an excellent point, and 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 something that needs to be um, challenged, fought against. Because it's not it's not part of our founding. It's not part of our um, it's not part of who we are as a country. Well, and it's it's it, I feel there are times I feel um, I guess sadness mm. uh, at how divided the country is. Um, and along those lines, there was a statement that was put out by um, Black Lives Matter Utah which had a picture of the flag and said, this is not our effing flag. This is the flag of racists and white supremacy. And, and, it, and it just, you know, 4th of July is not our day of freedom, you know. And look, I get that we had slaves when the country was founded in 1776, but the United States led the way over time to abolish slavery. And if, in terms of the founding, if you go back and look at the debates that happened during that time in Philadelphia and elsewhere, I mean, slavery was a huge part of that debate. And the majority of the founders wanted, I mean, indicted the King George, actually, as the one who brought slavery to America. Mm -hmm. and, and we had to rid the stain from, from our country before we were founded. Um, if anything, it was the it was the British who wanted to, to keep the slave trade going because they relied on it for, with the exports of, of cotton and other goods from right. the South, and that's not talked about. You know the economic issues of slavery that that the rest of the world at that time were relying upon, right? And and slavery still exists today. And a lot of it still exists where? In Africa. Yeah, okay. yeah. And that's an unfortunate, you know, reality. But our founding, and we've said this on the podcast before, <laughs> was based on the idea that our rights come from God. And critical race theory throws that out the window. It says that your rights are, are not even don't even exist. Well, and it's 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 and that's because it's it is founded a under Marxism. Marxist ideology, which is an atheist ideology. Yeah. Um, and I'm you know, I have close friends, family members who are atheists, but um, they all, I think everyone believes that there's something, whether it's karma, the universe, you know, some of some higher power, um, and. Those of us that believe in a creator know that those rights came from the creator. It's not something that's given to us by the government. And we, we actually grant them to the government. Right. Yeah. To so. a just government. And it's and um, I, I wrote about this in the past. Is as long as you look at our society and as a, other people as you know, and I said this the other day, as children of God, then this idea of skin color wipes away. Yeah, that's where well, that's where racism breeds. Racism breeds because people look at each other not as children of God, not as godly breed, but as something less than. Yeah, some an other. Yeah, an other. Which is sad because we are all 
God's children. Period. No. And that and that that would solve racial issues. It would solve political division. I mean, not not the typical political debate, but this this like I the, hate you. I want to kill you. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. That's yeah. The vitriol that we we've talked about on this podcast before would would fall away if we would look at each other through those lenses. Yeah. Just um, love each other. Love is the answer. Love, 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 love is, the answer. is the answer. All right. I yeah. think we should end on that point. Yeah, absolutely. Love yeah. is the answer. That's Faith, the freedom, freedom, free enterprise. And love. And love. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day.